I'm Chris from Missouri. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Piedmont Heart Institute and Marcus Heart Valve Center in Atlanta, Georgia. It's always a good question to ask ourselves, what are the risks and benefits of undergoing a transcatheterated valve replacement? A lot of these risks are based on the fact that we're treating patients that are already high risk for surgical valve replacement procedure. Uh, so these risks are, uh, most importantly, uh, not surviving uh, the hospitalization. This occurs about 5% of patients. So conversely, 95% of patients uh, will survive the hospital stay, but uh, there is a real 5% that may not. Now this is typically not a procedural issue, but it is based on the illness of the patient at baseline. The other major risk are stroke. Uh, we were actually learning that stroke is no higher and maybe better in TAVR than it is with surgical aortic valve replacement. This is in the neighborhood of somewhere 1 to 2 percent of major stroke from the procedure. Uh, there's also a small risk of vascular complications, which would mean there could be some bleeding uh, or even require small surgery at the area where we go in. And also there's a risk of needing a pacemaker uh, that can range depending on valve type between around 7 to 8 percent up to somewhere around 20 percent. So I think there's two huge benefits to a TAVR procedure. One is improved survival. We know that patients untreated uh, will only, about 50% of patients will not be alive at two years. But if we successfully treat these patients, they will be back on their normal life expectancy curve, meaning they'll be almost as if they never had aortic stenosis to start with. The other thing that's often much more compelling to patients is their improvement in symptoms. Often older patients think that they are now not able to do as much or tired or even short of breath because it's just typical process of aging. But frequently we find these patients have slowed down significantly uh, and it's because of the aortic stenosis and often uh, this, this debilitation resolves very quickly after a valve replacement procedure. The typical time frame for a TAVR procedure is based on how much pre-procedure testing has already been done. So after we see the patient initial clinic visit, um, if they need a heart catheterization or not, it'll be scheduled within one to two weeks. And then following that initial catheterization, we anticipate a TAVR procedure being performed in the first four weeks after that period of time. We know this is a very important because patients waiting for a TAVR procedure have a high risk of mortality. There have been several studies showing that wait lists over two months to have a TAVR procedure performed correlate with an increased mortality in those patients. So we at Piedmont think it's extremely important uh, to get a quick uh, but effective treatment for our patients. So we take great pride at Piedmont and really looking at the patient as a whole. Though we want a very successful valve procedure result, more importantly, we want to have a good result for the patient in the long run. We do this on several levels. First is during the procedure, where we optimize care, and we think it's done primarily by minimizing any sedation or anesthesia. Now, patients often ask me, will I be uncomfortable because of that? And I say, no, we will make sure that there is, only a, there is really no pain during the procedure. But we know that if we put a tube down an older person's throat and put them to sleep, it greatly increases uh, the length of recovery and provides potential issues and complications downstream. Now that's what we do during the procedure. Afterwards, we really developed pathways to expedite recovery. Uh, this involves getting in patients in chairs four hours after the procedure and walking around six hours after the procedure, which we think is very important uh, because if we get them moving so quickly, there really isn't much to recover from. We get all the lines and tubes out of them right away. Uh, they um, really get up and moving and we really try to avoid any narcotics or sedatives that could also delay their recovery. The day after the procedure, they'll be up in a normal floor bed, walking around and moving. And we really want them to ambulate up and through the halls at least six times that day. And we anticipate that two days after the procedure is done, uh, if there's no complications, the patients will be going home. And not only will they be going home, they're not gonna need any assistance from the medical community when they go home because they'll be doing so well. Uh, we uh, you know, encourage the support of family members, but we have built in place many mechanisms that really support the patient afterwards. We had them check their weight, their blood pressure, and their heart rate for the first 30 days after the procedure. 
And if there are any early signs of there being an issue, we will, they, they will be forwarded to me and we will address them immediately because we recognize that early identification of problems uh, really prevents them from becoming major issues downstream. And then they will follow back up with us in clinic at one month. And typically at that time, we're giving each other hugs and saying, you know, I'm so glad you're feeling so much better. And, and they really are grateful uh, for the quick recovery they've had from their procedure.